Is the Naples housing market bubble about to pop? That's what we're going to talk about today, and we will do so by doing a deep dive in the most recent data that exists so that you can go out there and make the best decisions for yourself, for your family, and for your financial bottom line, especially if you are shopping in the Naples market. Now, full disclosure, I am a boots on the ground operator in Southeast Florida. I cover South Palm Beach County and certain Western parts of Broward County. I am not able to serve and support you at the highest level in other regions in the state of Florida or in other regions within the country. However, I am connected with the best of the best that can serve and support you, that can go out there and advocate and negotiate and ensure you get what you want, irrespective of market conditions. So if that is useful, if you need a real estate or mortgage professional, hyper local in your area, then please reach out. You can click the link right there and we will set you up with someone in your neck of the woods that we know, like, and trust that can absolutely serve and support you and get you what you want. Now, enough sales pitch. Let's get right into the data. And as you might know, breaking news right now, the FBI is, um, I want to say rating, but I don't know if that's the right way to describe it, but they are actually, let's just go to the news announcement. They are searching. They are searching uh, Biden's house right now. Who knows what they're looking for? Who knows what that will yield? But it certainly is a sign of the times when the president's home is being searched. No bueno, no bueno. Also no bueno. We got the Fed today coming out with their latest interest rate hike. What will it be? Will it be a half basis point? Yet to be determined. I don't know. Stock market is down. What does that mean? Not much, but we're going to find out. We'll have that information at 2.15. This uh, this housing market data is going to be out before then, but keep in mind, we're talking about December data, so this is not current. It is the most recent data that exists, but unfortunately, um, this is a lagging indicator. This is not recent. This is December. But what does it say? Naples, Immokalee, Marco Island. This is the um, metro area, right? Closed sales. Now, as you can see over here, this is where I'm talking about. I am over here off the map, actually in this region over here where my cursor is. Um, but that's where it's the opposite side of the state, right? Closed sales down 38%. Median sales price up 6.8%. Now that median sales price is going to be very different than the average sales price, which is going to be significantly higher. <clears throat> and the reason for that is Naples is very pricey. It is a very exclusive area. It is very expensive to live there. And those home sales, as we do a deep dive, and those average sales prices are going to reflect that more accurately. That median sales price is not very instructive if you want to know what's actually happening in that market. What is helpful? Active inventory. Up, up. It's up. Well, it's helpful if you're a buyer. Probably not so helpful if you're thinking about selling. It's up 128% from a year ago. New listings down 1.4%. New pending sales down 30%. These are the trends that have been confirmed in every single market housing market video that I've done. It's similar almost everywhere in the state of Florida. All right, now let's go a little bit deeper than this so you know exactly what those numbers are. Now we've got the data, now we can do a deep dive. And as you can see a little bit more granularly here, and I'm gonna reduce the size of this so it's easier, hopefully for you to see, but we're talking about Collier County right? So we're talking about Southwest Florida and <coughs> we're talking about Naples, Immokalee and Marco Island, right? So this is going to be a further deep dive into the numbers that I just gave you, which were the 5,000 foot overview, but this is going to be more instructive if you are shopping in that area, if you're thinking about selling in that area. Also keep in mind, we're talking about December numbers. It is now February 1st. So these are not the most recent numbers. This is not the most uh, real-time data whatsoever. But what I can tell you is these trends have continued to progress 
And it is very likely that the supply will continue to increase and be more favorable to buyers and less favorable to sellers as we continue to trend into 2023. And the December numbers, excuse me, the January numbers will be out in mid-February. I believe it's February 20th. I got to check on that. But towards the end of February, you'll know what was confirmed in January. But again, it's going to be 30 days late. All right, here we go. Closed sales. Well, we already covered this. It's down 30, almost 40%, right? Percent change year over year from December 2021 to 2022. Um, this is the trend that we're seeing in almost every market. It's down significantly. Paid in cash, down significantly. <coughs> I will have to call them back. Average sales price. Now, I talked about it before. The median sales price is not a good number. Well, that's because it's not the average sales price. The median is simply the middle number of the range, right? Well, the average sales price, obviously, is the average of all those numbers. And that is up 11.2%. So the housing bubble that may exist, is it about to pop? I don't see any evidence of that in Naples right now. Does not mean that that won't change as we move forward because <coughs> there's a lot of variability. There are a lot of things that are happening that have not come home to roost yet. But make no mistake, the pain of recession is getting worse Certain areas are going to feel that much worse than others. Some markets are going to be far more insulated than others. And Naples is one of those areas that I think is quite insulated. But at the end of the day, a rising tide lifts all boats and a waning tide, well, it does the equal and opposite. It lowers them. Uh, but for now, this is what it is. And when I say for now, of course, I'm talking about December. All right. So Average sales price, 1.524 and change, up from 137. And that's a big jump. 11% um, in this market is nothing to shake a stick at. Now, I have mentioned in the past, I expect as we go into 2023, we will see single digit growth. Well, yet to be determined, I don't know, but I think most markets in the regions that I covered are more insulated. I do think there will be continued appreciation. I just don't think it's going to be the 20, the 30, the 40 percent. That is not going to happen unless our good friends over at the Fed decide to pull some uh, Harry Houdini and do something uh, completely unexpected to um, change their monetary policy, which I don't see happening. But I believe interest rates are going higher. I believe that the long-term trend on mortgage interest rates are going to be continue. They will continue to trend in a higher direction. And whatever happens today is what is what it is. But yet to be determined. I don't know. All right. Time to contract. 21 days to 42 days, up 100%. That is a normal number. The uh, exceptional market that we were in, the exceptional seller's market that we were in is officially over. And how, how do I know that? Well, <coughs> excuse me, I did not bring any water up here and that was a mistake because uh, my throat is dry. Month supply has jumped 223%, 1.3 months, which is a strong seller's market, to 4.2 months. That is how long it will take all the active inventory to sell if nothing else is listed. And four months is still a neutral market, uh, but we're trending into a buyer's market very quickly, which means if you're shopping, you've got leverage. You can negotiate and you couldn't really do that back when there's only a month of supply. That being said, active inventory up 127%. I know I'm all over the place. I did not go sequentially. Bad, Chris. You can follow along. You can see the trends. Uh, but time to sale takes longer. Time to contract takes longer. New pending sales got whacked down 30%. New listings down 1.4%. And pending inventory down too. I'm not going to break down the closed sales. You can read it. You can see it. And it's all good. Well, I don't know if it's all good or not. It depends on whether you're thinking about buying or selling. But please know, it is always a good market for someone. So you must pivot and know if you're a real estate professional, whom it is good for, and then um, go after that, right? Cash sales down 35%. Cash sales as a percentage of closed sales up 3.8% in December. 
Hmm, that's interesting. 54% uh, of all closings were paid in cash. You got some ballers out there in Naples. All right, median sales price. I'm not going to talk about this. I already told you why. I think it's a garbage number. I've already shared it. The average sales price, this is something to pay attention to. So it's up 11.2% at 1524, right? But look at some of this extraordinary growth that has happened in this frothy bubble. Is it really frothy? Is it really a bubble yet to be determined? I don't know. But if you look what happened to California real estate over the past 30, 40 years, what you saw was an insane growth trajectory and never really a big reset. Why is that? Because it's scarce. And the same thing is happening to Florida right now. There's lots of people who are making that argument. I'm not here to make that argument. I'm just here to propose it to you. What you do with that information is up to you. But average sales price up 11%. November, 36%. October, up 33%. Look at some of these un ungodly, extraordinary gains that happened over the course of the last year. 36, 33, 40, almost 40%, 10%, 13, 26, 34, 13, 11, 9, 16. Woo! Bar the door, Sally. Let's go. All right. Uh, dollar volume. <laughs> dollar volume is obviously going to be less because there were significantly less sales. That's down 31%. Not going to spend a whole lot of time there. Median percent of original list price, down 6% at 94.2%. But what do you notice? May through December, it was all, I'll throw June in there too, because it was 99%. Close enough. June through December, 100% of list price received. Time to contract, up 100%, 42 days. That's confirming the trend that we're seeing basically everywhere. Now, there have been some requests for some areas that I am probably not going to make a video on. It's um, by the time I actually get around to making that video, the new numbers will be out. So in an effort to uh, furnish you the information and get it out there quickly, I will post it as a um, community post so you can see what it is. Melly, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about Ocala, but I don't want you to... Uh, to wait any longer. So I'm going to put that out there uh, before I do this video and hopefully you see it. But if not, if you're watching this video, then go check that out and you'll know exactly what it is. And then separate to that, if you shoot me an email, I'll send you the more detailed analysis. So you've got it, but full disclosure, I'm not making that video today. All right. Pending sales down 30%. Well, we know that. New listings down 1.4%. Inventory, active listings in Naples, Immokalee, Marco Island, up 127%. We're seeing that trend everywhere. There is more inventory. There are more active listings. There are more choices if you're thinking about buying a home in any of these municipalities. Month supply up 223%. Big freaking jump. Big number. 4.2 months supply in December. Closed sales by price. I am not going to uh, go through this. You can read what they are and you can look at the brackets of pricing relative to sales. And what you'll notice is this is a high price point area. Median time to contract by sales. Same, same trend is reflected and same pattern is shown. All right. New listings by initial listing price. Well, Interesting. 53% year over year change of a million dollar listing or higher. We'll see what that trend um, continues to show us as more is revealed over time. But you can expect there's going to be more inventory, more homes for sale, as we can see here. Inventory by current listing price. Again, big jumps in all these higher price points. And then finally, the thing that everybody wants to know about, the thing that everybody asks questions on, and of course they should, but is there a foreclosure uh, market that's going, is there going to be a foreclosure event? Is there going to be a mass influx? Is there going to be a tremendous amount of foreclosure sales that happen? Well, no, there were zero in December. 
What about short sales? What about uh, distressed sellers that are trying to get out of their home <coughs> non-traditionally using a short sale? Zero. Why is that? Because everybody's got equity. They're just selling their home traditionally, which is what we're seeing. So the idea that there is a mass foreclosure event coming anytime soon must be debunked. It's not going to happen. Not that it can't happen. Not that there's a possibility of it happening. It's just going to take time because if someone stops paying their mortgage payment today, it's going to take the bank 18, 24, or I don't know, 48 months. It could take a long time depending on what games that homeowner plays to stay in place, but it is not an overnight deal. It takes a long time to get someone foreclosed on and the bank to take possession of the property. So as of right now, no foreclosures. This is the same trend that we're seeing in every market that we cover. So I hope you found this content valuable. If you did, please give, give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, subscribe to the channel, and check out my next video because I suspect you will love it a lot. And until next time,